Many of you have heard me talk about process before. It's been something that I've kind of focused on for years now. I did a video, I think back in 2013, 13 or 14, somewhere in that time frame, uh, to talk about kind of your swimming process and how, uh, how to approach it and how to really benefit from that type of view of what you do every day in the water or just in, within your sport. Uh, with process, a lot of times through the years though, we've found that people don't really understand what we, what we are talking about. In general, in a very brief definition, the process is how every piece of what will influence your swimming or your whatever you're trying to accomplish it in, in our case it's swimming, but it's how every piece of uh, your life really will influence that process to reach your goal. So if we look at swimming, and if I start to look at different pieces of it, I've broken it down here into kind of, this is my process board. These are nine different areas that I believe are important within swimming, whether it's just the training aspect or dry land or our technique, into more of the recovery type stuff, uh, nutrition, sleep, recovery itself, into racing, just knowing how to and your better or how to do that the best. Psychology or skills, starts, turns, underwaters, or anything of that nature, right? So you can look at any of these things. And as I go through my process, okay, so now this is my process, and I have to look at how all of these things work together. If I only focus on one of these squares, I'm not gonna move my overall process very much, correct? If I only came in and said, training is my focus, it's the only thing that's important, I'm gonna move this all the way to the top, but every other piece of my process is down at the bottom or near there, how good do you think you can be, right? But if I have my training up there and everything is moved up, maybe I'm at different levels on different things, but I continue to push and I continue to try to raise the level of each piece of my process, that's how you reach your goal. And not only your goal for that season, but it's how you reach your potential. Whatever you're chasing, whatever you want to achieve, and to reach that top end potential of what's inside of you, I believe this is the only way that you're truly going to allow that. And there's certain pieces there that hold people back a lot. Psychology being one of those. If we leave that at the bottom, even if we move every other piece, you're limiting yourself tenfold of what's possible. Right? So you can set your goal. Some of you may set really high, really uh, out there goals for yourself. And I think that's great. As long as the result isn't, I made it or not, is good or bad, but it's, I got within a second of my goal and it's a huge goal, and now I'm gonna change it, and I'm gonna chase it again, and you're still motivated by that. So like for me, I think I made a single individual goal in my entire swimming career, but it's not what my focus was. My focus was, I set that goal pretty high, I chased it, I just missed it, but I didn't leave the goal there because that wasn't good enough anymore. I thought I should already be there, so I raised the goal again and I chased it again. And I ended up chasing the goal most of the time, but luckily for me, I understood what that meant along the way. I understood and I enjoyed the process of chasing those goals more than anything else. And when you can enjoy this process, okay, of looking at all these pieces, of seeing how can I make myself better in recovery? How can I take care of myself more? If you have any type of pain in your shoulder or knee or ankle because of something that is ongoing or because of something happened, then you take care of it every day. You take care of it twice a day and you take care of it until for three days or a week afterwards it doesn't hurt anymore. Not until the first time it doesn't hurt and all of a sudden you're like, all right, I'm good there, I'll go forward. Because we all know that a day or two later it comes back again. But that's the process. That's the negative part of the process. For us to change that, we need to continue to improve how we take care of ourselves. Everybody with me? Good. Then we look at the board and there's a whole different piece of that. Sometimes you try to change, let's say technique. Let's say we're starting down here, you want to change something in your technique, right? Sometimes we go to change it and it won't move, right? We want to, you're focused on it but you don't feel and you're not able to actually move it. It's stuck, it's really hard. It's okay, right? That's gonna happen sometimes. 
but all that takes is more focus and more consistency to push through. So we have to work harder, we have to find that, and then it'll finally kind of break, break free, and it'll be kind of that breakthrough moment, and you'll kind of jump forward on it. You'll set that uh, technique, you'll set that change, and you'll be able to jump forward. But only if I kept pressing there. If I got to this point, tried to move it, and it didn't move, and I go, ah, oh, that's not gonna work, and I'm gonna move over here, it's not gonna work. You're giving in way too soon. All right? Other times, technique's a good example for us. Other times it's like, all right, my process is crank, cranking. It's all the way up here. And then you turn around, and then the next thing you know it's back down to there. Right? Because you've lost focus, because you kind of lost direction and focus on something else, or you just got distracted by school or had a hard time at home or whatever the case may be. Right? It's not good or, or it's not against you whether your process slides back down. It's just an awareness factor that you can push it back up. Does that make sense? None of this is against you. All of this is so that you can help yourself reach your goals, reach your potential as you move forward. You with me? So we want to make sure that we go through and we get things to be solid, right? So our, so our solidifiers, and we get things to be bigger than just themselves. So we look at technique, and then I come over here and look at my amplifiers slash solidifiers, meaning they're either making it that much more um, impactful on you chasing your goals, or they're solidifying things like technique. These things are consistency. What level of consistency do you truly have? When I say consistency, it's not just being here, but when you are here, how focused on you are you during every stroke that you take in practice? Because guess what? If you are not focused when you are going gear three or smoother on your technique that you use, then 50% of your swimming or more is done with poor technique or unfocused technique. Right? Is that fair? Okay? We have to be focused. And your consistency of how you approach this process and your consistency of being here and focused on making changes and being coachable and all those things is huge during that. The commitment, obviously. And I want you guys to understand something very clearly that your coaches understand. You guys are more committed than 90% of your peers in the world would be my guess. What you do and compared to anything else that anybody else does, I'm gonna guess that you're more committed to something than probably 90% of the world. That's awesome. You guys should be very proud of that, okay? You guys should be very confident in yourselves being able to handle that and do that, okay? What we ask for though, and when we ask for more, isn't because it's not enough, it's because we want you to reach your goals, right? We want you to be able to reach your potential and actually fly by what your goals are. To now understand that, wow, I can be even better than I thought I could going through. And to do that though, takes the commitment that we ask for. Not the fact that you are committed, everybody here is committed, right? But if you match the commitment we have, it goes into this commit consistency piece. And everything kind of builds on itself within this process. The focus, same idea, we talked about it for technique. But if we're not focused in practice, or we only focus when we do drills, or when we do starts to learn the start, versus when we're doing dive 25s all the time and you just go through the water without focus on doing it better, right? The focus of what you are doing and why you are doing it is crucial, okay? And then you go into work ethic or grit, your ability to push through or continue pushing when things get tough, right? That sustained effort, I'm kind of mixing things there with that, those two things, but it's that sustained effort. It's pushing through the tougher times. If swimming does anything to you guys, I hope it builds your confidence to be able to push through tough times, whether it's physical, or whether it's that emotional disappointment of having that goal and missing it by one one hundredth of a second. We literally sometimes are happy or sad based on one one hundredth of a second, all right? But if you learn the work ethic or the grit to push through that and have that understood as it's just a result, and next time I want more, and next time I come back and I evaluate this at the end of every season, and I see where maybe I fell off and where my weakness was, and I change that and I come back next season, there is nothing that will stop you. But you have to commit to this process, all right? 
Then we'll go down here, I call it brightness. And whether it's for this entire process, you can think of it like a light shining on the board, or whether it's your future. I believe positivity and growth mindset is how we get there. Growth mindset is not taking a result against you. It's not taking it personally. So it's never really being knocked down by a result or a finish, being beat by somebody. None of that matters. It's an individual race in which we get back, we go back to work, and we go again until we're done with that particular fit. Right? It's not if we get knocked down. It's not if we ever lose. It's how often we're willing to get back up, re-look at our process, and learn how to be better the next time. What swimming is all about is being better yourself. Chasing goals along the way and competing with others in order to improve yourself. That's what swimming is about. That's where these two are. The more you stay positive, the more that you handle all of those things that come your way. Because your coaches are going to throw hard things at you on purpose. You wouldn't grow as much, nearly as much, if we don't challenge you. So we're going to throw that out. But the more you stay positive, the more you enjoy this process. It doesn't have to be your favorite thing in the world, but enjoy being challenged, enjoy being uncomfortable. The more that this is gonna all come together. Growth mindset is that, it's never taking that personally. We can all grow, we can all improve, and we need to understand that, good? I'm gonna break out a couple of these just a little bit more. So, technique. I just have kind of five steps in this, this little mini process. I'm the same with training. Technique wise, master the basics. Okay? Bottom line is we need a foundation within technique. And the basics are things as simple as how you breathe and when you breathe timing wise, how long you breathe for. Okay? Very basic thing, but it changes how you can race going forward, especially how you can race when you're tired. Okay? Master the basics of how you float in the water how you control your body in the water. All of those things are the crucial pieces of how we start to build on top of it. I can tell you detailed drills to do that will improve a stroke and work great, but they only work if the person that's doing the drill has all the other basics down that can handle that and has their core engaged and can connect their body and move together. Does that make sense? So mastering the basics is huge in terms of your technique. Then we go up to understanding. Understanding in anything that we are doing, what we are doing, very simple, basic one of it, how it's being asked to be done, gears, intensity, whatever those things are, and then why we are doing it. Here at Rose Bowl, we do not do garbage yardage. We do not do things just to do them. We do things for a purpose. We do things to make you better, okay? Sometimes it's gonna be a little bit longer to train you both capacity wise and threshold wise, but also mentally so that you know that you can push through those things. And then we're gonna be intense and ask you to be fast. But there's always going to be a reason to the things that we do. So you need to understand that. But understanding these three things gives you that advantage over a lot of your competitors that are just going to listen to what the coach says and then do it to however they feel like doing it that given day. That is not nearly the same effectiveness as the what, how, and why all working together for that. All right? Coachability, purely meaning you listen to your coach and you try to make those changes, all right? You actually give it effort. You won't always be able to the first time. Your coach may need to voice it different ways, but you need to really be engaged and focused on making those changes, all right? That coachability is being willing to listen to your coach also not just you reviewing that process board, but you listening to your coach to talk about what needs to be done better, right? And not taking that personal. Again, we need to understand our coaches are here to help you with this whole process. And when we change something or ask you to change something or ask you to do something different, even if it feels weird or, or doesn't make sense to you at the time, that coachability is that trust in that relationship and it's the best way for you to move forward no matter who the coach is, right? That trust is still the best way for you to get the most out of your position, all right? Purposeful practice, it's just that focus of coming into practice and making sure that whether it's stroke number one on warm up or the last stroke on warm down when you are absolutely exhausted and all you wanna do is flop to, to the wall, but if you do it purposefully, you 
do it with the idea of getting better with every stroke that you take, not speed-wise, but technique-wise and form, then again, we take those steps. And everything kind of races up to the last part of this process here. I say racing, and what I mean by that is you get to step up on the blocks, you go race, and what you've been working on the whole time shows up in your race without you thinking about it, All right? Once you are there, this process is complete. You've done this one, whatever this goal is, right? You've done this technique process, and now you go back. Am I still working on that? Am I still doing these things? Coachability, and within these areas, you start to find what those focus points are, and it continues to change. You follow those focus points in to when you do them without having to think about it. When we talk about mastering the basics or mastering the different technique changes as we go, the whole idea comes from that saying, mastering something isn't doing it until you do it right, but it's doing it until you can't do it wrong, right? And racing is the perfect time for that because your mind should turn off and you need to just go. You can't overthink during a race, otherwise you're gonna hold yourself back. Right? So this becomes, you need to make sure that you get to this point and can go and just put it on the line, swim in that zone, and that technique holds. Once you're at that point, then it's time to really focus on something else. Does that make sense on this? Training idea, another just kind of example from it. Your attendance is, is the very basics of it, guys. Bottom line is. And if you think that you could have been five days a week, when you were younger and younger and now you get older and you go, wow, I can't do five, I'll do four, and you think you're gonna keep advancing, it's gonna take some time. You make changes to it that are negative, and you start sliding some of those process pieces down, you either have to get really good at other pieces or you have to accept that it's gonna take some time to kind of regroup into that lower training regimen, right? Or you continue to push forward and that attendance has to go up or at least stay the same or stay more consistent from week to week throughout a season. That makes sense? Into trying. Obviously it's needed and obviously I think all of you guys try. I don't, have, I don't think any of you guys and I very rarely see our team give up, but I do see us give in. Okay? And your trying is the basics. When I hear trying, it's kind of to me a built-in excuse of, well I tried meaning that you didn't have control over it, you tried and it just didn't happen, okay? Yes, we don't have control over individual circumstances every single time, but we do have control over what we do in the water. So if you come to me and you say, I tried my best, but I think next time I need to do this, or I think next time I need to go into training and do this, then it's not an excuse anymore, it's just that step along the process. But if you come back to us and you go, I tried, I just don't understand, you've already closed yourself off to growing and to learning, and you've already set that you would have done everything perfectly correct, and you expected that result no matter what. We need to be open to learning from those things. You with me there? So trying is great, but that doesn't take away the need for us to learn from it and then to continue to push forward. Uh, understanding, again, Training-wise, and what we set in terms of the attendance policies and the consistency that we ask, the things that we set there aren't for rules' sake. I hate rules. Every rule that I put in place, it means I have to enforce it. Every rule that I have to enforce means that I have to be watching for you guys to try to catch 450 swimmers breaking rules. I don't like it, okay? But we do set those expectations for certain groups especially because it's important that they understand what that process is. When we talk swimming and we talk attendance, this is all about consistency, okay? If you average six days a week in a season, right? Awesome, you're every day 100%, and yet you take a full week off three weeks before the meet, that's going to impact you, okay? If it happens, it happens. If it's an emergency, it's an emergency. Things happen, right? We don't require everybody not to do that on the team but I do want you to understand the impact it has on the process. If we lose that consistency, if we're training consistent and we go off, it's not just the weak time. You could come back that next day, the first day, and some of you may have felt this, and you feel awesome. Then the second day, you feel like you don't know how to really swim again. 
Third day is okay, fourth day may be awesome, fifth day again goes back to being bad. That inconsistency of what you feel in the water is because of the inconsistency in being in the water. Our bodies function best in a consistent environment. When we know what's coming, even when we are working the hardest, okay? Right now, I know the national group, I imagine all of you guys are in really hard work. When we are consistent and you continue to push and you continue to challenge yourself, if we follow up here a little bit more, continue to strive to be better in everything, no matter how tired you are, how, how you feel on a given day, your body will adjust and be able to perform. Here's the problem though within this, is most of the time we don't have that understanding and most of the time when you get to that point where you are absolutely exhausted in practice and it's like Wednesday and you know you have three more practices in the week and you have a test tomorrow, it is inside of you to protect yourself, right? So we give in, and we give in to how we feel because you've been trying so hard and you've been here so much and you've had these things and you've done things really well that you think you've earned that give in that little back off. And I'm talking 99 or 100% down to 99%. But once you think that you've earned that back off, your body loses consistency. More than your coaches are already managing for systems development, right? What your body wants to see is consistency. What you have to give it is challenge it to perform when you are tired, right? You have to push yourself to reach to that next level. Accountability. Some coaches are going to be really good at getting on people and, and kind of, of barking at them to making sure that they're pushing hard enough. It's not my favorite thing to do. I'd rather try to motivate people. But again, it comes down to what you do, right? Whether I'm just trying to motivate you or it's time for me to get on you because that happens too. Uh, both of those are just trying to get you to be accountable to what you need to do to reach your goal. Understand that all of this process and everything we are doing and everything that I'm teaching you is about you reaching your goals. Whether it's swimming or anything else, it's the same idea, the same approach to it that we can take. Does that make sense? So as we go through this, I don't want you to look at all of this and be overwhelmed. I don't want you to look at all of this and go, oh man, I'm, I'm horrible, I don't do any of these things. I want you to look at these things as the opportunity for the growth that you're working for. You guys all work hard. You're all in the water a lot. You're all working hard when you're there. You're all challenged a lot. Work this process and these steps in order to take advantage of that to its greatest. It doesn't change anything for you to go 100% to 99%. You're still gonna be tired at the end of the practice and to you, you still think you've worked hard. I challenge yourself to never give in at those times. Right? I challenge yourself to make the improvements to your process and really take a look at what you do in your swimming and to see what you can change that doesn't have to impact a lot of your life. I challenge you to work that process. All right? All right, thank you guys.